Good evening, I'm Mehdi Hassan. To understand the modern Republican Party, you first have to understand the way in which prominent Republicans have become, on any given issue, willing and shameless purveyors of the big lie. With the election, the big lie was Donald Trump won. With climate change, it was all a Chinese hoax. With COVID, it was all a hoax until it wasn't, and then it was all about hydroxychloroquine. Now, with the January 6th Capitol riot, there's a new big Republican lie doing the rounds. Listen to GOP Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin speaking on a right-wing Wisconsin radio show yesterday. The fact of the matter is, this didn't seem as an, like an armed insurrection to me. I mean, armed, when you think of here of armed, don't you think of firearms? Mm -hmm. here's, here's questions I would have liked to ask. How many firearms were confiscated? How many shots were fired? I'm only Sorry, what? What? It didn't seem like an armed insurrection. There were guys in tactical gear assaulting police officers, breaking windows, carrying zip ties. As NBC News reported last month, the authorities turned up a wide array of weapons, including an assault rifle, a crossbow, and 11 Molotov cocktails. Others had brass knuckles and pocket knives, stun guns, and stinger whips. Capitol Police officers suffered brain injuries, cracked ribs. One cop is going to lose his eye. Another lost three fingers. According to one report, police seized around 3,000 rounds of ammo from just nine arrests. Enough ammunition to shoot every member of the House and Senate five times, including Ron Johnson. Just last week, the House manager spent two days laying out in great detail evidence, including video evidence of a very violent insurrection on January the 6th. Ron Johnson is lying. And it's a big lie. A black is white, up is down, hot is cold kind of lie. The kind of lie that authoritarianism, and dare I say fascism, is built on. Don't believe your own lying eyes. Believe the propaganda we give you. And look, it's worth pausing for a moment to discuss Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. Because Ted Cruz and Josh Hawley have been heavily attacked for their role in spreading election lies. Lindsey Graham has been much mocked as the Senate sycophant in chief. But Johnson, who often flies under the radar, matches all of them in terms of obsequiousness, gaslighting, and to be clear, danger. He is the senator who, after every major network, declared Biden the winner, made clear he would not recognize a Biden victory. Senator, have you congratulated Vice President Biden yet? No. Why not? Have you thought that all about Ron Johnson is the senator who spread lies about election irregularities and voter fraud in his own state of Wisconsin, even though a Trump-appointed judge there dismissed them all. He is the senator who threatened to object to the certification of the vote on January the 6th and only backed off after the insurrection, which he now thinks wasn't an insurrection, prompting the editorial boards of two of Wisconsin's biggest newspapers to call for him to resign his seat. He's also a senator, I should add, who has a rather disturbing fondness for other conspiracy theories, too. He's a long-standing climate denier. He thinks the jury's out on man-made climate change. And he even used his perch as chair of the Homeland Security Committee to invite vaccine skeptics and COVID conspiracists as witnesses, something fellow Republican Mitt Romney described as nuts. But worst of all, Johnson may lie on behalf of Trump in public, may have spent four years enabling and praising the former president, but in private, he says otherwise. According to Mark Becker, former chair of the Brown County Republican Party in Wisconsin, Johnson told him in a phone call last November that Trump was an a-hole and that he, Johnson, knew and accepted the fact that Joe Biden had won. But according to Becker, to speak out against Trump in the senator's view would be political suicide. These are people willing to sacrifice democracy and truth for a man who they badmouth in private. Cowards and gaslighters, all of them. The 43 Senate Republicans who ignored all that clear evidence of incitement last week and blindly voted to acquit Donald Trump. Senators like Ted Cruz, who openly and shamelessly consorted with Trump's defense lawyers at the trial. A new poll of Republicans out today, though, shows Cruz polling at just 4% in the race for the 2024 GOP presidential nomination. Fellow senator and insurrection inciter Josh Hawley is at a minuscule 1%. Was that fist bump really worth it, senator? Was it? 
In one way, Ron Johnson may be worse than both Cruz and Hawley because he's not even running for president in 2024. And yet he's still running interference for Trump, still spreading dangerous conspiracies, still telling the big lies. Truth be damned. This is how democracy dies with senators like Ron Johnson of Wisconsin. For more on him and on this story, who better to turn to than the chair of the Wisconsin Democratic Party, uh, Ben Wickler. Thanks for joining us, Ben. How has someone like Ron Johnson, ultra loyal to doing this latest one, that the insurrection wasn't an insurrection, how has he flown below the radar for so long, avoided the glare of national media, the antipathy of liberals in a way that Cruz or Hawley or Graham haven't? Fundamentally, Ron Johnson uh, hasn't run for higher office. He hasn't done much of anything. He notoriously doesn't listen to his staff. He laid off most of the the Senate staff when he first came into office. As late as uh, around the election last year, a third of Wisconsinites had no opinion of him. But once you actually start looking at what he says and does, it is appalling. It is relentless. And he is fundamentally unfit to hold public office. This man is a danger to the republic. And he's sitting in a Senate seat that he should be nowhere near. Just uh, writing that intro earlier today, my kind of eyebrows were raised many a time. We could have stuffed a lot more into there about what he said and done, including about the Mueller investigation than we had time for. But let's just focus on what he said yesterday. Is what's happening with the this wasn't really an insurrection claim an argument about language, semantics, or an attempt to reframe what really happened, especially with the right-wing media audience that might not have seen the videos of the violent, you know, insurrectionists? So Ron Johnson is good at one thing, and that is detecting what the most extreme core of the Trump base wants to hear, regardless of whether it has any connection to truth, and then saying that thing. So one thing you you didn't play was his allegation that Nancy Pelosi, uh, he's insinuated repeatedly, somehow is at fault for the insurrection, that maybe he he speculated about what she knew and when she knew it. Um, He just tries to identify someone who he thinks his supporters will hate and blame them and find ways to hold them as harmless as possible, even if they're violently attacking the capital of the United States and threatening the lives of senators and members of Congress, including himself. Uh, yeah. This is somebody who rode to power on the back of the Tea Party wave, then was reelected because of Donald Trump's coattails. And he seems to think uh, that there is no guiding principle in our country in in anything that should shape his behavior other than the pursuit of his own uh, really small minded political power, the, the preservation of his own career at the expense yeah. of all else. And you mentioned those Pelosi remarks. You're right. Those are another set of crazy, insane, conspiratorial, dishonest uh, remarks that he made about the speaker in order to deflect, Johnson said, would be here uh, all night. It amazes me, Ben, that people who almost died have so little interest in who or what almost killed them. Uh, GOP Senator Roy Blunt last week watched the House manager's 13-minute video and said... He hadn't realized how bad it was. Hadn't seen all that footage before. Now Johnson goes further and says, well, it wasn't that bad. Despite the footage, it wasn't that bad. This is someone whose uh, belief in his own uh, supremacy above all else, who's sort of his epistemic bubble, his uh, failure to believe in the existence of people other than himself, extends so far that it's actually dangerous to his own health. But we've seen it in things like the coronavirus, where he held a hearing promoting quack science, and then he got COVID. I mean, this is somebody who who should be nowhere near a, a microphone or the public stage, and, and yet he's one of the two senators from the Badger State. It's a, it's a serious problem. So let's talk about that then. Tying himself so closely to Donald Trump may have endeared Ron Johnson to the right wing of the Republican Party in your state of Wisconsin. You mentioned the coattail effect in 2016. But what might it mean when he has to run for a third term next year? I mean, he said in 2016 when he beat Russ Feingold for the second time that he wouldn't run for a third term, but he's backtracked on that. And now he said he might run for re-election next year or he might run for governor against Democrat Tony Evers uh, next time round. Where are we on that? all that? The the problem that Ron Johnson has is that his behavior is being noticed by people across the state of Wisconsin, and it is repellent. 
and he's deeply, deeply unpopular. He's gone from being essentially little known and little noted to being actively loathed by a majority of Wisconsinites. According to the, the latest research that I've seen, it's a really tough place to be in if you want to win a statewide election in what's essentially an evenly divided state. He's hoping that he can help whip uh, his supporters into enough of a fury that it replicates 2010. And what he's missing is that he is directly causing problems in the lives of his own supporters and everybody else by making the pandemic worse, by obstructing the, the functioning of democracy. Uh, it's sort of like what we saw in Georgia. When you call democracy into question, that doesn't help you win a democratic election. And we're still enough of a democracy in Wisconsin that the public can throw him out of office. And that's what we plan to do. So um, Ron Johnson, one of the other things he's been doing recently is criticizing Mitch McConnell uh, for daring to speak out Saturday after the impeachment vote and, and saying that, you know, this had, uh, that Donald Trump was responsible uh, for the attack on the Capitol, even though he voted to acquit Mitch McConnell. But Ron Johnson's not the only person attacking Mitch McConnell. Donald Trump uh, has put out a new statement attacking Mitch McConnell that says in part, Emphasis on in part, because it is very long. Uh, Mitch is a dour, sullen and unsmiling political hack. And if Republican senators are going to stay with him, they will not win again. How does a Democrat like you, Ben, feel watching this quote unquote Republican civil war? Republicans in disarray. I mean, I have to say, I prefer watching this quote unquote civil war to the actual attempted civil war of an armed insurrection with people wearing civil war shirts as they carried guns and Confederate flags into the nation's capital. Uh, this, by comparison, is an intra-party spat in a party that has lost the, the right to govern, to be even considered for governing. The Republican Party has to be melted down and sold for scrap, and a, some kind of new responsible opposition party needs to take its place. Uh, it's a party that is fundamentally disconnected from reality, and it is uh, obviously nakedly directly opposed to the idea of majority rule in a country that uh, attempts to be, purports to be, aims to be a democracy. So what we're watching right now is uh, some kind of mutant uh, fanged chickens coming home to roost. I know normally chickens don't have fangs, um, but we're watching the, 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 <laughs> the world being reaped in the, in the GOP and it's about time. Yeah, I mean, you're right about the fact that it's detached from reality and it's anti-democracy, and that is dangerous for all of us. That's not something anyone, whatever your party affiliation, should want. In a two-party system, you need both parties to be committed to democracy, whether, whether that's in a state like Wisconsin, where there have been a lot of uh, dodgy Republican dirty tricks, uh, or at the national, federal level. We'll have to leave it there. Ben Wickler, thank you so much for your time tonight. I appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mehdi Hassan. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more of the Mehdi Hassan show by clicking on any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thank you for watching.